Hey guys, Sigmata on the mic, and we've got Yams, one of AZ's best commentators, here with me to talk about AZ's PR. What's going on, Yams? Hey, so, yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, here to make some baseless conjecture. Not entirely baseless, but, you know, not also entirely based on statistics. So, grain of salt, yeah. a few grains. A, a little video that we can afford to make because we're not on the PR panel, and this truly is um, just our analysis as invested members in the scene rather than people who are on the panel who would therefore be spoiling the PR. Um, yeah, we, got, but, we got some spicy opinions for you. We got some opinions and we got a little bit of data too. So let's go with that one, number one spot. Who's the best player in Arizona from this season? Number one, I think we both agreed on this after quite a bit of deliberation, mm -hmm. uh, Stroder. Yes. We believe Stroder's number one. Uh, you brought up the fact of just his incredible body of work. Um, winning so many tournaments. Yeah, the sheer, sheer number of tournaments won does a lot for you. He he won so many tournaments this season. Yeah, he won 14, actually. actually. That's, that's a lot of tournaments, bro. 14 tournaments is a lot. Um, and so it, it's really hard to doubt the idea that he is um, possibly number one, especially with Shane and Psyche kind of just not going to a whole lot. He was really the only. He was really the only one that was consistently winning mm -hmm. the entire season. Yeah, and on Rave's uh, spreadsheet, we do have the seven and five, Shane on Stroder. Uh, two of those sets, at least, the, at least two of those sets that I can remember were sets that uh, Stroder was playing Palutena and uh, uh, Shulk. So. Um, like I don't, I, I really don't like talking about stuff like that because it's like, okay, Shane Stroder gave up another loss that doesn't matter, but it's like, but for the other player, does it matter or does it not matter? I don't know. It's just weird to me. It, it's kind it of a nebulous. It kind of matters. It, 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 kind it kind of almost matters. It kind of you wish it didn't happen, but whatever. Um, it's there. It's it's a tournament. Um, we can either choose to talk about it or choose to ignore it, but. Um, we still have Stroder as number one, um, and just kind of, he, he did a lot, and the sets with Shane are very even, and Shane, of course, had he gone to more, maybe he would have had more opportunities to fight against Stroder, Latai, um, but, and then Psyche, of course, was out of state most of the season. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something that happened, yeah. and coming up on number two, this is where you and and I diverge a little bit, but it is incredibly close. Yeah. Uh, because I have Psyche listed as my number two. Right. You have Psyche as number two. I have uh, Shane as number two. Um, and this is just kind of uh, me thinking, you know, Shane's got uh, some more interesting wins under his belt uh, and thinking the tournaments through, uh, as far as tournament wins to me, seems even enough to put Shane up a little bit higher while you value Psyche's more wins in tournaments a little bit more. Yeah, I, I value because aside from Stroder, uh, the number of, you know, tournaments won uh, between the three of them, Psyche has the second most besides Stroder. And I think that's worth a lot. I think a PR should, a lot of it should be about how likely is this person to win the tournament if they show up. It's a fair. It's a fair statement. I agree. Um, one thing we don't disagree about is that Latai in the number four spot is pretty solid. Uh, I mean, he had that great se that great beginning to the season with uh, the results at Rise and, of course, at Civil War, beating uh, not just Zero but Fuwa as well and some other players. So, I mean, he had a great season in some ways, but he had a lot of really bad losses in state as well. So, yeah, he he got back from Civil War did not go to anything after that focused on school you know did his finals all of that which good, totally good, understandable good, that's good. what that's what kept back a lot of players this season mm -hmm. is school understandably got a lot of people that are still in school but he came back and uh was a teensy bit rusty yeah i want to say and uh, hasn't really got a stride back until honestly just last week so yeah and school kept a lot of people off of pr in general like um Names like uh, Ollie and uh, Solid come to mind. Apachai as well. Junior Z. Junior Z, even. Yeah. Um, well, Junior Z a little more uh, contested from some people that he should be on PR. Um, 
but let's go down into that 5-6 spot that is actually really contested between Spearwing and Felix. Yes, I have Spearwing at number 5, primarily because of Spearwing's relatively relative dominance over Latai. And also Spearwing has attended a bit more and is a bit more consistent this season, I feel. Just, just you know, kind of with my heart, that's how I feel. But Felix is coming up right there, too. Yeah, and Felix had those really big bursts. He won those two like half monthly tournaments, the Saturdays tournaments, um, and and, I, and he beat Spearwing for the first one. So I mean, Felix of course has a strong argument as well, and Spearwing has a really bad record against Stroder. Zero oh, and eight. That's, yeah, that's almost that's, embarrassing. That's zero oh and eight. That's really bad. Uh, something to note though, quickly, is uh, while Spearwing and Felix actually do both have a win on psyche mm -hmm. felix actually did kill psyche all all those stocks right so. yeah yes yeah, spirit wings yeah. win on psyche this past weekend was um <clears throat> i mean he said it himself it's one of the least proud of victories he's ever had whereas it was a very interesting set. felix's win on psyche was actually very dominating and impressive from him oh yeah felix's win was crazy bro um, but let's go down into that 7 through 10 spot, and there's a lot of players that could fit in here. Um, names like Scorch come to mind as players, uh, Scorch, uh, maybe even Googs could fit in here potentially. Uh, but right now, uh, we, we differ a lot on here, so you have Skylar at 7. Yes, I have Skylar at 7. He's been to a lot of things. Yes, he's had bad losses, but he's also had pretty good wins. True. So he's been relatively consistent. And he is always considered someone to generally be pretty afraid of in bracket. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, definitely one of Arizona's better players for sure, and I, I don't doubt that at all. Um, but he did take a few bad losses. Um, of course, losing to Stigmata is never a good loss. Uh, he's a really bad player. Should not be respected. Um, uh, who, but, loses but, who loses to that guy? Who loses to him? Um, but uh, and then I actually have Coco at seven. I just value his um, his really big bursts in play and. Uh, he had uh, they both had a win on Latai, of course, um, but Coco's win on Latai just felt more real to me. Um, you know, nines are Skyler, nines are Skyler in the game. But yeah, he did hit a nine. But, ni uh, nines are in the game, but I I always wish they shouldn't be in the game. <laughs> um, I love it, dude. I, I love I love a little bit of RNG. Little little bit of fear. Yeah. yeah I mean, we, we talked about uh, inconsistency in Smash 4. That's one of the inconsistent factors. But it is only one move that you shouldn't get hit by in most situations. Um, Except there are grab confirms into it, so... We do actually uh, agree on the number 8 spot, though. We both have Cybris there. Yes, Cybris. Uh, I use the similar terminology to describe both Cybris and Coco. Mm -hmm. If they make it past round 2 in a tournament... Uh, you have a reason to be afraid of them, right. and they will usually tear through almost anyone that is not top five. Yeah, and once they get to the top five, they do kind of struggle a little bit. Although uh, Cybers does have that 2-0 on Latai, and he did beat Latai pretty handily in that tournament. Yes. Uh, both these players kind of crumble when they fight someone like... Um, Stroder. Stroder or Shane. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, they do pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're very good players for sure. Um, Cybers, uh, and Cybers and Coco, of course, uh, a little bit close in that um, Coco did beat Cybers this past weekend, I believe. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they're both very strong players. You can't doubt that. Um, and then we get to the nine spot. Um, that's where I have Skylar, but you bring you have Coco right there. Um, we've talked about those guys already. But uh, rounding, so, out, rounding out number 10 mm -hmm. on my list here, here is the uh, the man with the most losses to one singular player. Yes. <laughs> uh, out of anybody else in the scene, uh, Kami, who is the proud owner of the eight and sixteen record against Skyler. Yeah, crazy rivalry really between the, uh, those two guys. I don't know what what other rivalry you could look at this season or in AZ in general and call it as much of a rivalry as that. Like sixteen and eight, it's not truly dominant um, on Skyler's behalf. But, I mean, the sheer amount of games those guys have played, it's just crazy. Yeah, the, the only thing that even comes close is, like, Strutter Shane. Strutter Shane, Strutter. yeah, the uh, official 7-5, and five, as we mentioned. Um, 
But yeah, and uh, we also we often see Kami do very well in those sets against Skylar. Usually, if he loses, at least when I've seen it, um, it'll go to game three, it'll go to game five, and then if Kami loses, he'll like throw a shadow ball into a bucket, and then he'll lose almost immediately because you can't yeah, win off that. Kami, Kami, another momentum-based uh, player, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, Cybers, Coco, and Kami are all extremely momentum-based. Absolutely. Uh, they they take a while to get going, but once they get cooking, they they do some damage. Right, they can right. they can hit people. Totally. Um, but uh, we've gone through our top ten. Give me a few HMs that uh, could have been on this list. Well, a few that could have been on the list. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually going to bring up people that could have been on the list like just easily. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Junior Z could have been on the list. Right. Uh, had he, you know, like there were a few things, like he lost to J Roach at a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, he lost to a few other people, and he didn't have like extremely consistent like appearances. So that is mostly the reason why he he did kind of fall off there. Yeah, he is uh, one of he is another one of those losers that lost to Stigmata. So shout out yeah, to Junior. He he can he can he can bring it back though. I can see him yeah. coming back into PR next season. He's but the actual player. the actual HMs that I would list mm -hmm. would be uh, Scorch and Googs. Scorch and Googs, both very strong, you know, Phoenix area players. Uh, both have really good wins. Uh, you know, they both have a win on starter, I believe. Yes. Uh, but you know, they both play uh, characters that can be pretty frustrating to fight sometimes. Totally, totally. yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to doubt you on that between Olimar and Sonic. Um, of course, Scorch actually has two wins on Stroder. Um, but Scorch, uh, while he had a lot of great burst big tournaments, he also had a lot of really bad buster tournaments where I, I don't even know if he intended on entering singles those days. No, he really only started taking the game more seriously like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's done pretty well, of course, um, except for this past weekend, he did lose to Dario and Lou, uh, Lou Rich. Not the best losses on his behalf. Um, not, not super great, but, you know, you have a bad week sometimes. Yeah, I'm going to bring up a couple of names. Uh, the Weasel actually went 100%, did not lose to a single Arizona player this season, um, and did at Rise get that win on Latai. Of course, while Latai was um, the next day at his very best, well, maybe second very best this past season. Um, and so I've got to mention Weasel. He had a really great season. Unfortunately, just didn't get to Phoenix enough to really be considered for the list in general. Uh, you call, can you call one tournament a great season? <laughs> well, well, I mean, he did dominate Flagstaff. He did super dominate Flagstaff. Yeah, okay, yeah, he is the king of Flagstaff. Yes. I'll give you that. Um, he, he did super dominate Flagstaff. Um, and that region isn't as free as a lot of people believe. Uh, I think a lot of people don't respect Zeal quite enough. Um, and a few other players up there that are starting to get on the rise. Um, but then, of course, we also have Silver, who usually the Tucson dominating player. Um, didn't play Spearwing quite that many times this season. Uh, but, of course, you know, great Silver and Silver's mom uh, not able to go to Phoenix. Yeah. The, uh, the young prince of Tucson, you know, mm -hmm. not making his way. Both, 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 uh, both of them, both him and the Weasel, kind of not really able to come to Phoenix despite doing pretty consistently well in their own sub-regions. Right. So maybe maybe they'll get better wins if they come to Phoenix more. Who knows? Yeah, uh, only time will tell. We've got a great uh, summer ahead of us. I think the Summer Smash is going to be really strong in Arizona. Uh, it's going to be really hot, too. <laughs> it's already <laughs> super hot out here. But very hard. I want everyone to try very hard. Uh, I want to see people, because I can already see it. Uh, I've noticed some. I've noticed that uh, a lot of our players are being very try-hard yeah. at weeklies, and I dig it. I want everyone to try their best, and uh, I want people to, you know, try to make their sets matter. Yeah, no Johns, guys. Always remember that. That's all we got for today. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and we will see you later this week or in the weeks to come. Peace out. Follow Twitter to feed my ego. <laughs>